why did you decide to use equivalent length, not K factors for the elbows? Ah, yes. So, well, all right. So first of all, let me say, um, this problem had a mile of piping. <laughs> so it had a mile of piping and then it had four 90 degree elbows. So it's kind of a moot point in the sense that we could probably just neglect the minor losses and completely ignore them and just focus entirely on the major losses. And we would still get the right answer. I did a rough calculation and the minor losses add about 2% to the total losses. Um, but that's a non-answer because your question is why do the um, equivalent length and not the K factors? So my answer to that is you can use the K factors and it should come out to be approximately the same. Um, the the uh, equivalent length is kind of like the old method from, from the paper and pencil days, but it's still viable in, in these computer-based days if um, because they, they put a table, they didn't have it in the first version of the reference handbook. When they put out 1.0, 1.1, it wasn't in there for the elbows, but now there's a table specifically for 90 degree elbows where you can get the equivalent lengths. So the reason I wrote this question is specifically to get you to see that that table is there because it surprised me when I found it. And I wanted to, I wanted you to ask literally this question and recognize that there's two ways. So let's just take a minute to kind of recap what those two ways are. And, and that's the reason I asked, I, that was another one of my questions was because initially I, I asked you initially, I was like, why can't, why did you use the K factor and not the equivalent lanes? That was one of my questions earlier on. Mm -hmm. when, I did, when I studied for the FE, they had the other table. So, um, so I was shocked that now they use K factors instead of the equivalent lanes. So. Right. It's like, it keeps changing. So what's the yeah. story? And I think, you know, the, the big answer to that is they should align, but you know, in case you want to check it both ways, or you just want to use the way that you feel is more efficient. And I think we can talk about when you might want to pick up some speed with one method as opposed to the other. So if you separate it into major and minor losses, then you would do Darcy for the major as one option. The other option would be, you're going to use the steel pipe friction tables for the major. And then you're only going to do the minor losses on a separate term. And since there's four elbows, it'd be four times kv squared over 2g whoops i missed the k and then you'd be looking up these k factors in some table for a 90 degree elbow the alternate approach from the old way is we don't necessarily distinguish the major losses from the minor losses and we still have the option to use darcy or the steel pipe friction table if we're going to use Darcy, we're going to do FLV squared over 2DG with the understanding that now our length is the equivalent length, which includes the actual, whoops, the actual physical length, which in this problem was like a mile of piping, we'll call that L, plus four times the length for each individual elbow. And this can be looked up in the table for 90 degree elbows. Whereas this would be looked up in a table for K factors. So in a way, I, I, that almost adds more confusion to the situation because now you have these two options. I would say, um, again, for this problem, I'm probably neglecting the minor losses, but I think it's good to know this method. If all you have in terms of fittings, there's no valves, there's no like special stuff going on. It's just straight up 90 degree elbows. Then you can just add up whatever that equivalent length is times how many there are, add it to the total physical length that gives you the equivalent length. And that's what you put into the Darcy equation.